everybody, Chris here. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a simple snow particle effect inside of DaVinci Resolve 17. So I think it's going to be easier to get an idea of how the final effect is going to look when you can already see the background clip in view. So rather than creating a fusion composition clip, which would be in the effects menu, and then down here in effects fusion composition, I will actually add the particle system directly onto the base clip. You can always set it up here and then copy paste it to somewhere else later if you want to. So let's select the clip in the timeline that we want to add particles to and then click over on the fusion page, middle bottom, and you'll see media in and media out here. So to set up a really simple particle system, we need a particle emitter node and we need a particle render mode to turn it to a 2D image. So let's click on particle emitter, which is right here, and then particle render over here as well. So once it's a 2D image, we can merge it with the base background node to create our final media out. So I'm going to click on media in one over here. And then I'm going to click on the merge node option. And that's going to make the media in one the background. So particle render one will feed into merge one. And that will put the particles on top of our background image. So you can see that the default shape for a particle emitter is a sphere. So this is where all of the particles come from. And you'll see that by default, there's no velocity for the particles. So they would basically just stay there. So one way we can have snow set up would be to use a line shape. So if you use particle emitter, let's go to region and set it to line. Then we can set our starting and ending points for the line. So I'll just pull the line up here like this. And then the other side of the line I'll put over here. Now it doesn't need to be perfectly straight top down. You could put it at an angle if you want to, and you can pull this way further out as well. Once you add velocity to it, you'll start getting a picture of kind of how these particles are going to look. So let's go over to the controls tab where it says velocity. Let's add some. So I'll just pull that down this way, go to some point in the future for our animation, and we can't see anything. So now if you hit play, even though there's velocity, you might not see the particles. So one way to kind of troubleshoot that really quickly is just to pull the line down and see where they're actually going in, what direction. You can hit space. So they're going to the right here. So I actually want to rotate it downwards. So I will make the angle, let's say negative 90 and just test it. So we can see they're coming downwards now, but way too fast. Let's lower the velocity way down, probably to something like 0.1. Now you might also notice these particles are really tiny. So these are point particles, which are very fast to render, but they're also microscopic in their size. So what we might want to do is go over to the style tab and change style point over to style brush. And then we can change brush to flake. And there are many different types of snowflakes you can use. So when you select one of them, you'll see that these snowflakes are way bigger. And you may also notice when you hit play that they are quite slow to render uh, by comparison to just a single point on the screen. But this may be more appropriate. We actually want to see the snowflakes. So let's take the line back up and angle it how you want it to be, hit space, and you can kind of test it. You can see that these snowflakes are falling straight down. So we'll want to change the angle a little bit. So let's go to controls and adjust the angle. We can use this little wheel and adjust it until the snowflakes are falling at the angle we desire. Now, right now, they're all going in exactly the same direction. So one of the tricks about particle systems to make it a bit more believable is to add variance. So where you see velocity variance, we can increase that. And now they're not going to be falling at exactly the same speed, but there's going to be a difference. We can add angle variance of some number of degrees, and then they won't all be going the same direction or the same speed. And we could even change the angle Z variance if we want some of them to be kind of falling into the background or coming forward towards the camera. To change the timing at which your particles come out, you can change the temporal distribution to randomly distributed as well. Let's add a little more variation over on the style tab. We can go to size controls and let's increase the size variance. And we may also reduce the base size of each snowflake because those are really big snowflakes. So if we lower it down and have the variance, this will help a bit too. So if we hit space, now we can see some small snowflakes and some that are quite big as well. If you have problems with your playback performance, one setting that can help you a bit, especially when a lot of particles get on the screen and some start to leave the screen, if you click on P render, there is kill particles that leave the view. So if you click that and then you go back and play it again, this will help keep the number of particles that the system is keeping track of uh, to a minimum. And if we go to frame zero, 
then you'll notice that at this point in time, there's no snowflakes on the screen because a particle emitter needs a few frames to start generating the particles and adding the velocity to them. So if we go to frame zero and hit play, you'll see it takes a while for the snow to get on the screen. So you might want that, but at the same time, you might just want there to be continuous snow for the entire duration of your clip. So what you can do is you can pre-generate frames. So you can just think of this as the number of frames that have already progressed for your snow when your video clip actually starts. So if we set this to 50 and hit enter, then at frame zero, it's already showing frame 50 of your rendering of the snow, which in this case is enough to have snow all the way at the bottom of the screen. So if we have play now, then you can't really distinguish frame zero from frame 50 of the video because enough time has progressed that the first wave of snow has already gone through the entire video clip. All of the particles look too similar. Just try playing around with some of the variation settings. I've showed you a few in the video, so angle variance would be one way to get the snow to go in all other kinds of directions. But there's other ones you can play around with, such as variance on the color of the particles. You could also go to the style tab and you can have the size of a particle increase or decrease over the duration of your clip. So if I pull this down and then increase this at the end, then the particles are going to end big, but they're going to start small. So if we hit space now, that could be one way to kind of give the illusion that the snow is getting closer to the ground, closer to where the camera would be. So interesting options you can play around with, but there's really a lot of different options. You can even do color over life. So if you want to have the snowflakes end in a different color than they start, you can just add a point here as it creates a gradient and then change it to some other kind of color. So now it goes from white to red over the duration of your clip. Just make sure that before you export your video that you take a solid look at it in a full view, like on the edit page, hit play, make sure it's what you want. And that's pretty much all there is to the basics of particles. If you wanna add extra complexity to your particle system, then just add extra particle nodes along the line between particle emitter and particle vendor. So if you took your particle emitter, you right click on the line in front of it, add tool particles, you'll see a bunch of nodes here, mostly for adding some kind of force to your particles as they move across the screen. So for instance, if I use particle vortex here, then inside of the sphere, it's going to be changing something for the particle. So if I move the vortex down here, let's lower the size. So it's very obvious where the vortex area is. And then let's add a lot of strength. Okay, and we'll go back, hit play and kind of render this. Then you can see that now the particles as they get to this point are gonna kind of swerve around this center vortex area. But it's only affecting the particles that are inside of that region. So there's interesting tools like that that you can use to play around with your particle system effects. Of course, you can see the more stuff you add, the longer it's gonna to take to pre-render all of your particles. But when you do render out to your final video, it should be fine. It'll just take a little longer to export your video, but, but everything should play at the full frame rate once you're completely done. So that's about everything you need to know for creating basic snow for your videos using particle systems inside of DaVinci Resolve 18. I've been Chris. Thank you for watching this video to the end. I hope all of you learned a bunch about particles and I will see all of you in my future video content.